Hey all you OpenTunes users, um, so this tutorial will be about keyframes. Um, yeah, so if you saw the last one I made, it was actually about motion paths and tweening using motion paths. Uh, and I implied that it was the only way to do a motion tween. Well, it kind of turns out that I was wrong. And in fact, uh, there's a really, really easy way to do it that was right under my nose and I completely didn't notice, so I'm going to share that with you today. And another cool feature that there is that I found. This is um, keyframing. So, uh, if I, I showed you guys already, but if you go to GUI Show, show Hide, uh, you can click Toolbar, GUI Show Hide, Tool Options Bar. And that's what I covered in the other tutorial. However, there is another one that you should bring up called the console. And in fact this whole interface right here is called the combo viewer I believe. If you go up to Windows uh, combo viewer. And it's essentially just the same thing except with all the elements already showing. I don't know why they don't open up the program with it already like that. You could probably make a preset so that all these load up. But from what I found so far in OpenTunes 1.0 saving anything that's different than the default settings causes it to crash on startup on a lot of computers so I would refrain from doing that now but if that gets fixed then you can probably set it so that the whole combo viewer is there when you open it so to start I'm gonna go ahead and create a drawing on column one here and I'm just gonna make a circle again just like last time, except this time, instead of going into the schematic view and creating the motion path, I'm going to just create a keyframe. So like I did last time, I'm just going to extend the exposure of this a little bit, just so we can get a keyframe going on. Alright. And um, the cool thing about doing it this way is that you are allowed to change the center. It's sort of a local keyframe, so a local motion tween that you'll be creating. So what I'm actually going to do is select right here. There's a whole list of all of the elements in our scene. And right now we're working with column 1, so we do want it to be on column 1. And we actually want to change the center point, so we can change the pivot to be right here in the center. Now we can go to position, and we can move it. And we can also rotate it from the center. So to keyframe this little uh, key icon down here, all you have to do is press it. When it's blue like that, that means there's a keyframe. So in OpenTunes, a keyframe is like a state, pretty much. It's just um, the maximum extent of a motion or transformation in the drawing view. So with the keyframe on, on frame one, we can go down to frame, the last one I was showing, frame 10 here, and we can position it elsewhere, and then keyframe it. We could also change its rotation if we wanted, and its scale. And now, if you scroll through, we have a really easy motion tween. So, in the last video I made the uh, motion path, that doesn't necessarily mean don't use motion path because it's a more complicated way to do it. In fact, uh, motion paths will have its advantage and disadvantage. In the last video I made a bouncing ball and I created an arcing movement like this. A keyframe is just a linear, linear interpolation in OpenTunes, so if I were to make a frame here, make a frame here, and then make a frame here for a bouncing ball animation, it would just kind of go like this, which isn't as realistic as the motion that I made where it sort of came in and did that. So that's good for uh, for tweens that require a little more movement in them. Of course you can always add more keyframes to sort of interpolate between them, and you could also do it that way. Um, but yeah, the biggest advantage is that you can do it from the center point that you set for the object, so you can actually set a local pivot point. The bad thing, though, is that you can't view it in the schematic view. As you can see, ignore all these. If 
for uh, column one here, there isn't really anything coming off of it. There's nothing really indicating that there is a keyframe. So you just sort of have to remember that you keyframed locally on the column. Also another cool thing is you can scrub through the keyframes just by pressing these arrows. So taking the guesswork out of trying to find the location of the keyframe, you can literally just scroll through them. And then, like I said, it's a state, so all you have to do is turn it on or off if you want to delete it. Which is actually a little bit easier to get your head around than in a lot of other softwares that do keyframing. So I think that's actually pretty cool. And the more I use this software, the more I understand why Studio Ghibli and the Futurama team have kept it because it's actually very advanced and yeah the more I use it the more intuitive it becomes for me and I actually like it a lot so you see all this down here I wanted you to ignore that but I just kinda wanna add in another cool thing on top of this so I'll hide this and then I'll show these and I'm just gonna go ahead and play this animation so it's a man he has this angry face, and when I play it, smoke comes out of his ears. Like, you see that? And that's just a hand-drawn animation on two different layers. Oops. Disconnect that. Oh, and speaking of disconnecting your windows, or, you know, navigating the windows, another cool tip, if you go up to where the, like, the top bar of the windows are, and double-click, you full-screen it. Double-click goes back to normal. Another cool tip for you guys. Um, so the reason I have this animation here, right here, where the smoke comes out of his ears is because drawings aren't the only thing you can keyframe. I'm gonna go over here to the palette edit real quick and I'm just gonna actually I might detach my XG for this just going to drag this out so I can see everything. So what happens is the smoke flies out of his ear at frame, starting at frame 16 as you can see right here. Oh and by the way I drew these all in raster not vector. Um, I might make another tutorial about this. I think I will actually make a tutorial about this for just hand drawn techniques. But just for a quick example here, if you want to create a raster layer, just right click on a level, which is what uh, which is what each frame is called in a column. Just right click on the level that you want, click new level, and change it from tunes vector level to tunes raster level. And that's all you have to do to create a raster layer. And I'll show you a bit more about working with tools within a raster layer, but just letting you know that you can work in vector and raster. And for this purpose, I kind of like the way line work looks a little better in, in raster. That's the, really the only reason I did it. Alright, so yeah, the smoke flies out of his ear at about 15. So what normally happens in cartoons when a guy gets really angry is his face turns red. And that is precisely what I'm going to do. As you can see, I have my palettes down here. You can create a new palette by clicking this button right here. And then this edit menu comes up. And then you can change it. And then all you have to do is hit apply. You just change the color, hit apply. And that's how you create a new palette. But I don't want that actually. So I want his face to turn red. And if you notice that there's a little keyframe here, I think you know what I'm about to do. I'm going to go to frame one, keyframe, go to, I don't know, maybe about frame 14, keyframe again. And this time, I can go over to the palette on frame 14 as it's keyframed and change it to a nice, I don't know, like a, a little bit of a desaturated red, sort of like a, something like this, maybe a little darker and I'll apply it. And of course if you don't like the way it looks on the character, like it looks kind of weird, uh, you can always just change it again. 
There, that looks a little bit more like classic cartoon red. All right, cool, look at that. I'm gonna go back to the cleanup, actually. X out of it here. And I'm just gonna put it on loop. All right, so now you know how to keyframe in OpenTunes. Uh, stay tuned, I'm gonna show you some hand-drawn techniques in the next video. And uh, I've been working with the 3D camera as well and learning how to do some parallax. And I think I'm comfortable enough with the software to uh, compile a whole scene. And my plan is to just do a crash course video where I make an entire project and hopefully have all the drawing elements available for free download so you can follow it. And uh, so yeah, that's my plan. So don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more. I've been figuring out this software and I actually really like it so far. Let me know what you think.